So we've done a couple laser videos, one how to burn tiles and one how to burn scratch paper. I think it's time to go bigger. I'm thinking full size canvas wall art. This stuff is awesome. My name's Jim and this is The Edge of Tech. We've done a couple videos, one on how to burn some awesome tiles and get your magic numbers, and the second one on how to burn some scratch paper. And I really love the scratch paper. This is that silver scratch paper we saw in the last video. But today, it's time to step it up a little. We're gonna take something that we've burned on the tile like this, and we're gonna supersize it and make it a 10 by 10 canvas that we can hang right on the wall when we're done. This is a classic Lord of the Rings scene. And if you know what it is, drop it in the comments below. But I tell you what, this was such a fun project and I'm gonna show you how we take something that was on a tile like this and amp it up to canvas size like this. It is actually really easy and in this project, I'm using three colors. So let's dive into it. So to start, we're gonna grab a blank canvas. It looks just like this. And on the back, it looks like this. So it's wood with the canvas stretched over. It's already stapled on and it's good to go. Now I got these particular ones at Amazon and the links are in the description below. Uh, you can get them at Michael's or any other craft stores as well. So the first thing we need to do is get this thing painted up and get ready to burn it. So let's go. All right, so we take our canvas and we put it wherever you're gonna paint. Now, as you can see, I use this setup quite a bit. Um, but you want to make sure you're not going to ruin anything under it. I'm outside, so we get good ventilation. And uh, we're just going to paint right over the top. But first, we need to get our edges. And I like to do our edges first. Um, so we'll go kind of just like that. Just like that. Just a quick shot over the edge, because there's going to be two more coats. Then, what I like to do is do one coat straight up. We got one coat straight this way, and then we're gonna do one more coat coming this way. Just make sure you get it all coated. It should be nice and even now, and that's about all you wanna do right there. You don't wanna do any more than that because we're gonna put some more on top of that. Now we need to let this sit and dry for about 30 minutes, and we'll do our next coat. All right, now that it's dry, mostly to touch, it's not tacky, I'm not sticking to it, I'm obviously not leaving fingerprints in it, um, we want to put our next coat on. Now, a lot of people now will just do a black coat and then you'll have two coats, uh, orange and a black. In this case, this is a special piece. Uh, this is actually a commission for a friend of mine and I'm gonna do three coats. So we're gonna do three total colors. The next one is gonna be red. So we wanna do the same thing we did with the orange, but with the red color now. So I'm using the Rust-Oleum 2X Painter's Touch. Um, this is the apple red, it's a gloss. Uh, there's a ton of different paints out there. Use whatever works for you. But now I'm gonna do the edges, just like we did. I'm gonna go around just like we did the first time. Get all those edges. So this is why it wasn't important that it was 100% covered because you don't wanna go too thick on those edges or it'll run. So now you have your edges done, we're gonna do the same thing, but I'm gonna do it backwards. I'm actually gonna go this way first and then come up this way. So it really doesn't matter which way you paint as long as you remember to paint the same way every single time. All right, so now we got our uh, red on there. Now we gotta let this coat dry for another 30 minutes or so, so it's not tacky anymore. And then we're gonna put our black coat over the top. This is actually a glare from the light here, so it's not a light spot. Okay, now the red layer's dry. It's time to put on our gloss black. Now this is the same style paint, Rust-Oleum Painter's Touch 2X. Uh, this is the gloss black. We're gonna do the same thing all the way around the edges, once this way, once that way, and then we're done. We need to let this dry for 24 hours before we can burn it. Unless you have a heat gun, then you can actually heat each layer and this goes so much faster. You could probably do it five minutes between layers if you have a heat gun and you'd be ready to burn in about 20 minutes. So that's a fun little trick. In this case, we're actually just gonna paint it and let it sit and here we go. And that's it, now we have our black on, now we just let that dry for 24 hours and then we're ready to burn. So once you're done painting it and it dries, it looks something like this. So what we need to do now is take this canvas that's painted, throw it on the laser, jump on the computer and get our image ready to burn. Let's go. We're gonna start off by grabbing any image you want. 
Uh, in the last two videos, I showed you how to grab images from Google. You can do that, or you can grab any images you've taken yourself. Just remember, if there's any copyright images, you don't want to sell those because they're copyrighted and they're other people's artwork. In this case, I'm going to use that classic scene we found from Lord of the Rings. I, I went to Imager, and this was also in the scratch paper video. And I'm going to upload my picture, which is Gandalf versus the Balrog. And as we see, it uploaded it here. Now, it automatically makes it um, black and white when it uploads an imager. And that works. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come on up here. And this was the full picture. This is just an amazing scene. Uh, as you saw with the, with the burns we did, the colors are just awesome. So I'm going to come up here to the yellow. And we're going to crop the image. And I only want a square crop because the canvas I'm using is 10 by 10. Now, if you have a a wide canvas, 11 by 14 or something like that, you can leave it like this and just resize it. In my case, it's only 10 by 10, so I really need to resize this thing. Now, while I really like the sword he's using, the whip was really featured in the film, and that's kind of what I wanted to uh, feature. So what I'm going to do is just crop it to about right here, and that gives us our square that we're going to see. So I'm going to hit the crop button. And if we scroll down, you can see this is the current crop right here. So what we need to do next is resize it. So I'm going to go up here to my measurements. I'm going to put it in inches. You, you can use pixels, inches, or millimeters, whatever you feel like. In my case, I'm going to use uh, inches, and they're going to be 10 by 10. And I'm going to up my DPI for this one because it's on my diode laser to 318. I'm going to hit OK, and this will process that selection. When it's done, if you scroll down, it'll show you both. This was the original. This is the new one here. So as you can see, it's kind of bigger because it's 10 by 10 now. The next thing we want to do is click the blue box right here and click on the Norton tab here. And we're going to scroll down to Norton White Tile Painted Black. Now, we used this in the last one as well. Um, the reason is, is because basically it's a white canvas and it's going to be painted. So we're going to choose White Tile Painted Black. We're going to hit OK. And it should, if we scroll down, give us our new image. Now, everything you see here in the black uh, is going to burn deeper. Uh, it's actually going to burn the deepest into our canvas with that laser. Anything in the white or the gray is going to burn either not at all or very little. And so this is where those magic numbers come in because anything in the black you want to really make sure that's the color you want in your tile uh, as far as the, the deepest color. Meaning that if it's really red or orange you want to get, you want to look at the, the tile we did in the magic numbers video and pick out the number that you want the most, which is what these black areas are going to be. So if it's a 15% or a 20%, that's what you want to use. But now we have our image here. The next thing we do, just like the last video, is we're going to save it. So we're going to go here. We're going to download as a PNG. Click the X's on the ads, and it actually starts downloading here. So you only have to click them once. Apparently, I just did it three times. Uh, when we are done with that, we want to click outside, and we want to click the uh, and we want to click this last icon here, which deletes and reloads the screen. So it deletes that image from the server and reloads the screen. At this point, we can close Imager and open Lightburn. Now that we have Lightburn open, uh, we want to make sure we are connected to our laser, and we want to open the picture by going to the little icon uh, right here. And scroll down and find the picture you saved. In our case, we saved it in downloads and we saved it a bunch of times. So I'm going to click that last one there. And if we look at this and we click on it up here, you can see it's just about 10 by 10. And that's the size of the canvas. Now I want it just to have a little bit of black edge. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to resize this up here to 9.85. And that'll go down just a little bit all the way around. And we have a, just a little bit of black edge like you saw in the beginning of the video. Uh, once you are ready here, this is everything you had to do because Imager did everything. Now, uh, Lightburn is amazing. They just updated and there's a ton of new features. And you can actually do this all right inside of Lightburn. But for this tutorial, we used Imager. And that's what we're going to stick with. Now what we need to do is go to our layer up here. And we need to assign it to a layer. I'm going to assign it to this blue layer so you can see it outlines it in blue like that. 
I'm going to click on that image, and we want to make sure that pass-through is enabled. That means Imager did the processing. We just want the laser to pass through and sh and burn just like it sees here. We don't want the laser to do the processing in the background. Uh, the next thing I want to do is keep, I'm going to keep mine at 1200. And because I'm using three colors, I'm going to use orange, red, and black, as you're about to see when we paint the canvas. Uh, I'm actually going to bump this up to about 21. And it allows me to burn to the color I was looking for. So I'm going to use 21 here. Just make sure pass through is on. And we hit OK. Now inside of the laser, we're just about done here. What we need to do is place the canvas on the laser and get this aligned and then hit the burn. Now I did go through the aligning process in the first video I did with the magic numbers. So I'm not gonna do it here, but I am gonna do a standalone aligning video, just a quick one because a lot of people are asking me about it. Uh, in this case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start the laser at the center of the tile. So I wanna go over here to uh, current position and you'll see that my job origin is in the center here. So I'm going to click right here, which is set the laser pointer. I'm going to click right in the center, and it, the laser head actually moves right to the center of the canvas. Uh, then you, what you want to do is make sure you're centered on that canvas by using the frame button. And if you hold shift and then hit the frame button, it actually shows you the laser on a diode laser as it goes around the frame. You can make sure you're straight and centered. And like I said, I'll do a separate little uh, video on that, and it'll come out probably after this one. So once everything is good to go, all we have to do is double check. We're going to do 1200 speed at 21 power. Now you can go faster and with higher power if you want, if you want to test and play with that. I just prefer it this way because I figure slow and low is the way to go. So what we're going to do is uh, hit this start button and we'll see you on the other side. Okay, so the 10 by 10 version is officially done. And I think it looks great. To show you the difference, this one is the little tile we tested on. So this is much, much bigger as you can see. What we need to do now is carefully wipe this down. So I grab my microfiber that is slightly damp. I find a clean spot on it. And just like everything I do, I go one way and then I go back the other way. And then you wanna grab a dry one and do the same thing. Now, I would just say slightly damp, not wet. Don't soak this or anything like that. Just barely damp, um, and it'll clean off this canvas nicely. I don't do that on the tiles with the damp cloth, but I do do that on this canvas because it cleans it up very nicely, and the canvas is a little bit different material. Next thing we need to do is take this, and let's get it clear coated. All right, now what we need to do is get this clear coated. As you can see, I got the little one here, which I already clear coated. I'm gonna pull that aside. I'm gonna take my clear coat here, and I'm actually using a new style clear coat for this video. This is a Minwax Polycrylic, and it's a water-based paint. Now, if you saw one of my other videos, you noticed that some of the paint reacted when I sprayed the clear coat on it. In looking through the forums and the help I got on the Facebook groups, People really suggest this because it does not react. So we're gonna give it a try. I did use it on the little tile so I know that it works. So I gave it a couple sprays here just like always and as always, I'm actually gonna coat the whole thing one way and then we'll come back the other way. Now with the canvas, you wanna make sure that you're getting the sides as well and you don't wanna get it too thick when you're going down the sides because it'll run. So I spun it around halfway uh, because I didn't get this side yet. So I need to do that. So we got a spray down here. We got that side coated and now I'm gonna do one this way. And we should be good. So now I got it all coated and what we need to do is let this dry. So I did one coat this way like always and I did one coat that way like always. And now we just let this thing dry and after it's dry, we'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so we jumped right into the laser. You saw me pull it off the bed there when it was done. We wiped it down. Uh, like I said, I like to grab a microfiber. Just make it damp, not really wet, just a little bit damp on the canvases. And I like to wipe my canvas down with that. Um, 
and then take the dry side and wipe it down. Make sure all that soot is off there. On the canvas, I found it's actually a lot less soot than on the little tiles. I'm not sure why that is. I'm not sure if it's the canvas or what, but the little tiles in my experience actually have a lot more soot when you wipe it off. Then you saw me clear coat it with that new clear coat I'm using. It's water-based, and I really like that. So I actually used it on this tile, as you can see. Uh, I could have done a couple more layers to make it thick, but I really liked how it came out. The shine looks great. It did not react with the paint, which is amazing. Since that worked, because that was my test tile, I actually used it on the canvas, as you can see here. Um, I really love this scene. I really loved how this came out. If I'm, if I'm looking at this in person, I probably would go a little less percentage on the burn next time to leave a little more black in here but as you can see it really came out well you see all of the different shading and the red and the the whip here and uh, Gandalf and, and the Balrog he came out so good now all we really have to do is walk in the house find where we want to put this hang it right on a nail or whatever you want because it will hang on the back of your canvas uh, one thing I really like these canvases is because they have this lip here and it just holds so well all you have to do is uh, do a little screw a little nail and then pop it right onto it on the uh, on the wall and it'll hang there for you so one thing you did not see was a time lapse of this burn and that was my fault because i accidentally shut the camera off before i saved it but while i'm talking right now i'm actually playing a quick time lapse of the little burn and you should see how it all went on the little tile and that's exactly how it went on the big tile it just took much longer with this there's a ton of things you can do i did this one right here you might recognize it uh, from harry potter and I just did the same thing. This is just a white canvas. I painted it black. All I did was laser out the words in the center. And I can hang this up in my son's Harry Potter room. You can do any colors you want. And if you're not a good drawer or uh, artist like me, <laughs> this is such an easy way to do art. I mean, it's so, f so much fun that you can just take these, burn them on your laser, and hang them on a wall. And they're great for presents. They're great to give people. You can sell them if you want to sell them. Just be careful of the copyright material. I don't want to get in trouble there. Uh, but I tell you what, it is so much fun using these little lasers. I'm using the uh, Ortur Laser Master 2, and my version is the 20 watt, which is really about five and a half laser watts. But I really love this laser. It's doing such a great job. And I tell you, when you look at this with the three colors, the detail that comes out of these little lasers is really, it's just awesome. Well, I really hope you guys take this and make some really cool stuff on the canvas. You can get all different sizes of canvas. Just make sure they fit inside your laser dimensions. Uh, if it's too long, remember, you can raise your laser up and slide it under. That's really cool. And as long as it fits within your laser, the possibilities are really endless. I tell you what, I had a great time making this video. I hope you guys loved it. I hope you loved Gandalf and the Balrog. This is actually going out to a friend of mine. I really hope he loves it when he gets it. He hasn't even seen it yet, so surprise if you're watching this. But I hope you learned something. And as always, keep printing. Hey everybody, I hope you guys loved that video. Give me that thumbs up if you did. Hit that subscribe button right here and the little bell if you want to get notified anytime we go live on Monday nights for Hot Makes or any other time a new video comes out. I really appreciate you guys watching. Did you guys see this one?